One of my favorite kinds of underwater images is called a split shot or an over under. And you can do these on virtually any dive, especially at the very beginning or the end of the dive when you're close to the surface. Let's talk about some tips and tricks to make these a little easier to capture. I think a lot of us find over-unders to be one of the more compelling images that we capture because it's one of the few times that you can unite uh, the beauty of what you're seeing underwater in the dive with the actual location that topside observers can relate to. Blending these two totally different environments is challenging, uh, but also very rewarding. Mostly for these shots, we use big domes. Eight inch domes are preferable and super wide lenses are as well. This will do two things. One is it'll make you more able to control the water line that's dancing around the center of the dome. And it will also bring more elements from both the underwater and the topside section of your image or your scene into the frame that you're capturing. So one of the first challenges you'll find when you're shooting these kinds of images is that the tonal range is crazy. If you've got a bright sun in the top of your frame and dark water below, there's gonna be a range that's too wide for a lot of cameras to capture. So as the photographer, what you wanna do is minimize this. And the first simple way to do this is to shoot with the sun at your back versus the sun in front of you. This is gonna give you a smoother total range, especially if you have white sand to brighten up the lower section, and it's gonna make it a more even exposure, easier for your camera to capture. Now, an exception to having the sun behind you are the famous sunset split shots. These are some of our favorites. This is a challenge because you're pointing the camera almost right into the setting sun. So it's gonna to wanna to stop you down to you know F22, a thousandth of a second. And if you do that, the lower section of your frame is gonna be very, very dark. The solution that most photographers use to fix this is to use two strobes, that are submerged to light the lower to the equivalent of the amount of light that you're reading from the sun. It sounds more complicated than it is. Expose the camera for the sunset, put your strobes on TTL, and they'll light up whatever comes in close enough to be hit by the light. Another trick for getting better over under images is to go into the shallows. If you can get into two, three, four foot of water with a bright overhead sun and hopefully maybe some sand or some bright corals to reflect that light back up, you're gonna have a relatively uniform exposure from the top to the bottom. It's gonna be easier to get an image that is sharp all the way across and also the proper exposure. As a general rule of thumb, using a faster shutter speed, if you're not using flash, even go up to a 500th or a 600th of a second. If you're using flash, go to the max, which is probably 200, 250th. These faster shutter speeds are gonna help freeze the water line across your dome. On the other hand, feel free to experiment with some slower shutter speeds, like a 60th or a 30th. Sometimes it'll make a nice, creamy, soft, little bit of motion blur of the water line across your dome, uh, which can be pretty visually pleasing. Over-unders are a little bit easier to shoot when the sea is flat and calm, but there's always gonna be some movement, whether it's from you or from wind or wave action. What you're generally gonna try to do is get that water line right in the middle of your big dome because it's never gonna be exactly there. Things are moving around. Some tricks that you can do are sometimes to hold the housing out in front of you so that you're not even looking through the lens or at your uh, preview screen at this point. You're actually looking over top of the housing, trying to get that water line into the middle. Another helpful thing is to shoot in burst. If you shoot in burst mode, you're gonna find that the five or six shots that you have in succession, the waterline is gonna be here, 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 there. So uh, could be anywhere from the top third to the bottom third. So shoot it on burst and consider shooting over the top of your housing versus looking through it. Without a doubt, one of the issues that you're gonna to have to deal with if you start shooting split shots is water droplets on the dome and there are several fixes that will help, uh, none of which are perfect. My favorite is to make sure that I have a very clean dome before I go on an over under dive or a split shot dive. So what I'll use is the fine polish for the dome port. I find that when it's super clean, that the water will sheet down more evenly as opposed to clinging in droplets. There are other people will use spit on the lens, just like you do on the inside of your mask. 
This can work. Uh, and I know people have used rub their lenses with potatoes. I've actually never tried this, but I've told that can work too. Another thing you can do is the quick dunk and shoot. In other words, you look through the lens, you see all the droplets on the dome, dunk it into the water, and then lift it and shoot as you're lifting. That way the water's gonna sheet off evenly and not leave you with those individual droplets that are clinging. But be sure, you're gonna have to fix water droplets in Lightroom or Photoshop after the capture. It's just part of shooting over-unders. One thing you should be prepared for with over-unders is that when you look through the viewer at what you just shot, it's going to look really disappointing. The tonal range that we're capturing is very wide here and it's not going to display well in your camera. So if you go out and try these for the first time, remember it's going to look like your sky is blown out and it looks like your over-under is black. But when you get into edit your images, you can bring those darks back and you can tone those lights down. So don't stop shooting just because what you're capturing in your screen isn't what you expected. If you have any specific questions, please send them to us at iclight at iclight.com.